Welcome to Latino Americans with your host and narrator, Jacqueline Torres. Everything you need to know about Latino history by the author Emil Senovas. She is an expert in Latino history, culture, literature, and human rights. We will start today with why did Ponce de Leon bring African slaves to Puerto Rico? The Taino welcomed the Spanish conquistadores with open arms, believing them to be gods. However, they soon regretted having rolled out the welcome mat. The Spanish began their quest for gold by enslaving the native people, confiscating their lands, and appropriating them as a workforce. In exchange for mining the small deposits of placer gold found on the island and tending the fields to feed the conquistadores, the Taino were given lessons in Catholicism and Spanish history and culture. Under these oppressive conditions, hundreds of Taino died of exhaustion, malnutrition, and maltreatment. Others perished because they had no defense against the European diseases that the Spanish soldiers brought with them. In desperation, the Taino rebelled in 1511. After their pleas for better working conditions went unanswered, Ponce de Leon responded by having 6,000 Taino shot on the spot. Those who survived the slaughter took to the mountains or rode away to other islands. With the Taino labor pool swiftly dwindling, Ponce de Leon asked Spain's Ferdinand II for permission to bring slaves from Africa to the island to work in agriculture and thus keep Puerto Rico's plantation economy afloat. The Spanish were not the first to engage in the transatlantic African slave trade. To cope with the labor shortage in Brazil, in 1502, the Portuguese brought the first African slaves to the Americas. In 1513, the first shipload of African slaves arrived in Puerto Rico. With them also came smallpox, which took thousands of Taino lives. By 1515, fewer than 4,000 Taino remained in Puerto Rico, just a fraction of the population Columbus had encountered. Having given up on gold, Ponce de Leon turned his hand to transforming the island into an agricultural paradise. In 1515, he introduced sugarcane, and the Spanish government funded the construction of sugar mills by the dozens. The African slaves and the few remaining Taino were put to work, cultivating and harvesting the crop by hand from dawn till dusk under the scorching tropical sun. The Africans proved sturdiest of all and their population increased, while the Spanish and native populations dwindled. By 1531, the Spanish in Puerto Rico numbered 426 and the Africans 2264. Before long, land was parceled out to Spaniards desiring to settle in Puerto Rico. Each settler who agreed to farm the land, or more accurately put, to oversee the slaves who farmed the land and to remain for more than five years was granted between 200 and 1400 acres. Soon coffee and spices were cultivated in addition to sugarcane as these luxury items were in great demand back in Europe. By the 17th century, tobacco and ginger emerged as the principal crops. With the wealth amassed on the backs of the Taino and African slaves, Puerto Rico thrived. Spain looked anew at its colony in the Caribbean and decided that, indeed, it was a rich port, a good place to settle, farm, and grow wealthy. African slavery persisted in Puerto Rico until Amadeo I, the king of Spain, abolished the institution there in 1873. By then, the Africans, who believed that their ancient Yoruban deities had followed them to Puerto Rico, had grown deep roots in the fertile tropical soil of the island and felt quite at home there. By then, also racial integration and intermingling of the Taino, Africans, and Spanish of Puerto Rico had taken root, giving rise eventually to a largely mestizo population. Recent genetic research has uncovered matrilineal indigenous ancestry in 61% of Puerto Ricans and patrilineal European ancestry in 75%, which means that the majority of Puerto Ricans are mestizos, overturning the prevailing judgment that Puerto Rico's population is comprised of a white majority, smaller mestizo, and African segments, an Asian minority, and no Taino. Thank you for listening to Latino Americans with your host and narrator, Jacqueline Torres.